Is your lead guitar playing starting to sound a little bit boring? Are you looking to add some spice to your guitar solos? Well, I've got three techniques for you today which are really going to add some hot sauce to your playing. Mm. Hey there, Owen here from Guitar Mastery Method. We help guitar players all around the world, just like you, to take their guitar playing to the next level. The first tip that I'm going to share with you today involves how you pick the string. The intensity that you use to pick the string can convey a lot of emotion in your playing, taking it from being a little bit boring to really getting a message across and some feeling into your picking. I'm going to play a lick twice. Once with some pretty flat picking, and secondly, I'll put some more intensity and vary up my picking a bit, and then we'll have a little bit of a talk about how you can do that in your own playing. All right, and now I'll play it with a bit of a variation of my picking. There's a few things that I did with my picking there. Let me just explain. The intensity with which you pick the string can change the volume of the notes coming out. So we can go from a really quiet note up to a much louder note. Let me show you. If I just pick quite softly, get a very quiet note. And if I hit it really hard, get a much louder note. Now obviously you want to vary it up, maybe even increase the intensity from really soft up to much harder. Bring it back down. And as you saw there, you can also change the speed that you're playing. One thing that's quite common is to play the softer notes a little bit slower and then as you get louder, add some more intensity, pick the string a little bit quicker. The other thing that I did differently between the two licks was when I bent the note here at the 15th fret on the B string, instead of just picking it once, pick it multiple times while it's being bent. just for a little bit of extra spiciness in it. Tip number two is a technique called a double stop. Now, what a double stop is, is when you play two notes and two strings at the same time. Really common in blues and rock music. In fact, it's common in all genres of music, but especially in rock and blues, it can add a lot more growl to your guitar playing. Here's an example. So the basics of a double stop, as I say, playing more than one note on more than one string at a time. The first part of our lick started with a double stop at the 12th fret of the G and the B strings. So using the third finger to bar across both strings and then picking both. So let me just quickly break down this lick for you. It's a pretty simple one, mostly double stops and at the end, there's what we call a unison bend. We'll get to that. So you start off, as we say, at the 12th fret, G and B strings. Hit those, and then what we're going to do is we're going to bend up both those notes. Now it can be a little bit tricky to bend two strings at the same time with the same finger. So what you want to do, get your second and your first fingers in there helping out just resting them on the strings. I've got my second finger also barring both, and then first finger barring both, but probably a little bit more on the G than anything. And then using them all to bend up both those strings. And then releasing it back down. Now we're not doing a full bend, not even really bending to a specific pitch. We're just trying to get those two notes moving together and then back down because it gives a really nice growling sound. 
We then play a double stop at the 10th fret on the G and the B strings with our first finger. So once again, just barring across those two strings, then hitting the pick on the G and the B. We then play another double stop, 12th fret of the D and G string with our third finger. Then back to that double stop at the 10th fret of the G and the B with our first finger. So just that part, all double stops with the bend at the start. Let me just play it for you slowly. We finish the lick off with a unison bend. Now, a unison bend is when you play one note. In this example, it's the 10th fret on the high E string. And then play another note and bend up to the same pitch as that fretted note. So unison, meaning the same. So we play 10th fret on the high E, 13th fret on the B. We're gonna bend up that note at the 13th fret of the B to be the same pitch as the note on the high E string. This can also be a really good way to practice tuning your ear and your fingers to bending correctly in tune, because when that note is bent and it hits the correct pitch, you'll be able to tell. Quite often when two notes aren't quite the, quite the same dissonant, they sort of seem to do this inside your ear holes a little bit. They sort of jump around each other until they hit the same pitch and then they'll sit like that. Let me just play that whole thing for you again, nice and slow. My third and final tip for you today is to play some notes you probably shouldn't play and make them sound awesome. What I mean by this is to take a note that is outside of the scale that you're playing and by either bending it or sliding, you can put it into a note that is inside the scale. Let's just take the G-shaped pentatonic scale that you know and love, and I'll show you an example of how to do this. And we're gonna start this on A, so G-shaped pentatonic scale starting on A. If I just pick a random note that's not inside that scale pattern that I just played, we'll go 6th fret on the G. So just the part of the G shape pattern that is around that would be on the D string 5-7, on the G 5-7. So if we take this note in the middle, 6th fret, it's not inside that scale that we're playing. So if we were playing this over an A minor chord, That note doesn't quite sound that good. If I just play, it's basically an A minor chord, and stretching my hand out a bit and play that note. Doesn't sound that good. So what we want to be able to do is to resolve it to a note that is in the scale. Which sounds a lot better. So Two ways we can do this, as I say, we can slide up to that note, or we can bend up to that note. So, playing over that A minor chord, we could do a quick slide. Could even just, if you want to build a little bit of tension, just delay that slide a little bit. Once we hit that note that's inside the scale, our ear will thank us for it, and it will just feel a little bit more natural and a little bit more like what we were trying to get to. Now, we can also bend this note up, so from the 6th fret, bend up to the 7th. Just hitting that, especially when we're playing an A, hitting that low A string, 
which we call a drone, because of just drone, and bending up, which just help tell when you're in tune. And it's just a really cool sound, getting those out of scale notes and getting into the in scale notes. Now, here's a good little tip. Whenever you play a note, and it's a wrong note, the right note is only ever one fret below or one fret above the note that you just played. Of course, entirely subjective, but if you hit that note, which over an A minor doesn't sound too good, moving up one fret or down one fret from that note gives you a note that's inside the scale and it's more correct. Let me just improvise a little bit and I'll show you what this sounds like. I hope you enjoyed this lesson on how to add a little bit more spice into your lead guitar playing. Me, I'm off to drink some milk after all that hot sauce. <laughs> Please do go ahead, click the subscribe button down below, click the notification bell icon, and you'll be the first to know when our new videos and new lessons come out. Also, in the description box down below, I'll put a link to a Blues Solo Heat Map download. This is going to show you exactly where on the guitar fretboard to play to create red hot and really spicy blues guitar solos. It'll tell you exactly the notes you need to play to be sounding like a pro. See you in the next lesson.